on Grid Systems and we will continue today looking at how you can use Symfony with existing networks in SIM format. We have here um, Symfony and we can choose to import a network. At the moment the net file that is there is the one that was created for the demo for the geospatial editing but we wish to import some new ones. To do that we can create a new folder to put the files into which we will call ENSOE16 because we will be importing the ENSOE16 bus sample sim network. We now choose to import, we will select um, from the file system and we will select and we will go straight to the desktop and here we have our ENSOE16 we can see the files here, we will select all of them and we will say we wish to put them into the folder ENSOE16 in this folder now we have a number of files this is the two boundary files from ENSOE and then there are four files each for the Belgian and Dutch sample networks. We will choose to import all these together as a merged file. To do that, we simply click, then shift click to select all, and we say we wish to open in the Symfony browser. This is a dynamic resource set because it's made up of a multiple files. So we will give this a name and call it ENSOE16. We can tell that we wish to check the header dependencies to ensure that all of the dependencies for each file are satisfied. We can show any warnings that occur during the parsing, such as unrecognized schemas, um, classes that don't exist in the meta model, additional attributes, etc. And we can also choose to run the profile validation at this point. This will show us what resources have been selected to be imported. We click finish, it parses the files and it says there were some issues detected during parsing. By clicking details we can find out what they are. We can see here that these were actually early versions of the files that were being used for the purpose of demonstrating um, how some errors are detected. So here we have a class that, has been, um, that doesn't exist in the sim and we have features that are not recognised within the sim connection type on the power transformer end class. Within here, we are seeing the object not found, which means that there is an association to this ID from a class within this file, and it does not exist. So these are some of the errors that were detected. At this point, we can choose to cancel and try and deal with them, but we will just continue. It now runs the validation, and this is checking constraints. The original validation checks there were done again by comparing whether the file met with the meta models um, definitions, whether it was valid XML. Now we're doing additional levels of checking whether constraints have been met that are more detailed validation over and above what is in the meta model. We'll see here that it was going to open up a table for us showing us the breakdown of the results. So we now have our merged file here loaded, the ENSOE16, and inside here we have our validation output. If we double click here, we can expand this view out. So we can see that in the dynamics, there's some all, all the instances of these objects are failing because it's looking for some specific attributes to be set that did not exist. As I said before, these are earlier versions of the file. So there are validation errors that were corrected before the interoperability test itself. The all instances indicates that every instance of that class failed on these. So we can see that here for the synchronous machine, the name has not been set for them and is looking for that. Here for the SV tap step, there is tap changer must be set and it is not set for this instance. The one above you can see there is an association to a tap changer, this one does not. This is the detailed validation view. We can choose to export this as a text file. We can also choose to turn on a validation report here within the browser itself. So if we select our prof the profile we wish to validate against, in this case, the ENSOE 2011 containing all of these sub-profiles, now we will see there's interactive validation going on within the browser. If we double click again, we minimize this down. We can see there is a validation view here within the outline. This shows the profiles that have been run and you can see there were some errors with the equipment. 
We have our operational limit set. We're looking for names to be set for this. If we click on our power transformer, we can see there's also errors occurring and it's looking for name to be set for the power transformer as well. The green ticks here indicate that these constraints have been set. So these are valid and we can see where the problems are occurring. This can go down to individual object or we can do it on a per class basis. We can see here when we select the tap steps, there's only one invalid instance and it is looking for the tap changer to be set. So this is us loading up um, an existing SIM file within the browser. We can close the validation output if we don't want the more detailed. And what we can also do is we can do some more um, dynamic changes. So for example, this is looking for name to be set in base voltage. If we go in here and add a name to this base voltage, Now we can see that for this base voltage, it is now actually valid. By selecting away and back again, we can choose to refresh that original view. And we can see that this base voltage no longer has any validation errors because we, because when we click on it, we can see that they are um, both the constraints required for this have been met. So this is an example of how we can perform validation. We can also change the validation rules we're using. We could check, we could use ones that were not designed for this data. So we'll look at things like the functional profile from the distribution model and apply it to this transmission planning model. So we can see here there are now more, there are errors occurred. If we look at fossil fuel, it's looking for a name to be set for it. If we look at the power transformer end, it's looking for name. Regulating control. So there are errors introduced here because we're applying a profile to this um, data that it was not designed for. But it can be used as an example of how the validation takes place and the kind of output that we are getting. So this is an example of how we can use um, Symfony for performing network validation.